friends, in the series of uh, case studies uh, pertaining to environmental impact assessment, so today we will discuss the second case study I would say and this is related to inland waterways project of China that is EIA, we will discuss about the EIA report of that inland waterway uh, project that was Hunan Shangyang inland waterway which is the name of this project and the project details and the location we will discuss about then the main components and benefits of the project which were you know included in the report and then EIA and environmental law regulations which were uh, taken care of during preparation of the report and the steps and processes of EIA particularly in China that would be discussed benefits over other modes like uh, you know we can compare if there were highways then what would happen or something like that and then location alternatives because EIA also discusses at times like alternative routes or alternative methods so that comparison can be made a logical or rational comparison can be made to make a proper informed decision. And then impact and mitigations, public participation, grievances, redressal system, monitoring all those things we will discuss before the concluding remarks. So, uh, this is uh, very brief and uh, preliminary information about the project. This is Hunan uh, Shangyang Inland Waterway Project of China and uh, this is multi-purpose river uh, barrage project basically providing navigation draft for shipping along a 50 kilometer stretch but also generating some hydropower. And this project grant was given by Asian Development Bank ADB and the EIA report was prepared by this uh, Hunan uh, Shangyang Navigation Construction and Development Company Limited in 2011. Well, uh, you might be knowing about Asian Development Bank uh, which is basically uh, you know to uh, give money for various uh, socio-economic projects in uh, Asian countries and uh, this is like uh, uh, projects which are inclusive, which has resilience and sustainable from environmental and economic point of view. And uh, for that purpose, ADB provides soft loans and technical assistance also, sometimes grants, sometimes equity investments also they do. So, there are various uh, you know products they uh, use for these particular activities and there are uh, 68 member countries including India in the ADB. This is the project location if you see this map and uh, that is basically in the middle to lower reaches of the uh, this uh, Shangyang river, a tributary of the Yangtze river which flows from south to north and it joins Yangtze on its right bank near the Shenglingji. So, these are uh, you know uh, different location related points and it was proposed that it should be located approximately 38 kilometer upstream of Hengyang municipality. This is the town's name and about 50 kilometer downstream from uh, Jiwanchau complex. So, this is uh, a information about the location of this project and the main component of the project is basically one river barrage to raise water level so that uh, you know they can uh, uh, avoid the floods etcetera which can store lot of water and along this uh, 50 kilometer stretch floods related possibilities can be reduced downstream. And then hydropower station uh, of capacity 90 megawatt and which can produce annual energy like 358 uh, million kilowatt hour and it also provides like uh, you know for handling goods in, in certain rivers which are uh, located in downstream side. And there are also components related to like uh, uh, inundation areas where uh, uh, people are living. So, they will be uh, resettlement of the farmers and removal and replacement of structures and assets of those farmers. So, those are the components of the project which were properly taken care of as per this EIA report. We have taken uh, you know information from the EIA report. Well, the need of the project is because uh, the terrain is very rough and tough. It is hilly area and the roads and railways are not so conveniently constructed there and there is this river. So, if proper draft is available for the shipping purpose, 
for navigation purpose, then uh, you know uh, it can really uh, fulfill the need of that particular area which is like uh, 60 percent of you know industrial output in that particular province, province means state uh, of that particular state or province, this is in that particular area and that can be catered by this particular river where uh, this project was uh, launched and implemented. Well, then uh, you know you can see like uh, the freight uh, predicted to grow because of this particular project from 0 0.20 to 0 0.29 billion tons. Okay, this is billion tons that is why decimal is there from 2020 to 2030 that is the prediction of the growth of this uh, you know freight uh, in that corridor and 20 million tons only in 2010. So, you know from 2010 to 2020 0 0.20 billion and then 0 0.29 billion. So, huge uh, freight uh, uh, possibility is there. So, there is business opportunity and then it can lower the transportation cost. The reason is because uh, you might be remembering when we discussed about inland waterways characteristics and we compared with highways or railways, we gave you data that this inland waterways uh, transportation cost is bare minimum, bare minimum and also it is very good in terms of uh, you know very low amount of GHG greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. Energy consumption is also very less, it is around 65 percent of railways in that particular area. Our study was different where uh, please do not mix up those data and then 50 percent of the highway transport. So, at cost wise also there is a lot of saving means 85 percent saving is there if you compare with the highway cost okay. and the 22 percent of the highway transport GHG emissions is only 22 percent in this particular uh, way of transportation inland waterways transportation means if uh, like 100 units are being emitted by highway then only 22 units will be emitted in this particular navigation system. Uh, this is pictorial representation of this Tugutang river barrage. Uh, so, proposed barrage the design is there and then barrage after construction. So, that uh, there is navigation system in parallel and then the EIA requirement of Asian development project uh, because you know Asian development bank has uh, given certain guidelines. World bank also has certain guidelines when they provide loans for development projects those EIA has to be conducted. So, as per uh, you know this ADB's requirements uh, similar to World Bank this is under the category A this project was considered under the category A means significant environmental impacts were envisaged that is why this EIA was compulsory for this and those potential significant adverse environmental impact that should be avoided that should be addressed. So, EIA report must be there, this study must be there. So, requirements were there for this particular uh, loan and the project funding and uh, that is why this project report was prepared after a long term study. Then there are laws and regulations uh, related to environment uh, within China like uh, this is the time series in different years they had different laws in 1989 environment protection law, 1997 prevention and control of environmental uh, noise pollution, then in 1998 uh, this protection of wildlife and in the same year flood control law was enacted and then evaluation of environmental effects, water law and uh, fishery law, then prevention and control of pollution by solid waste, water pollution and atmospheric pollution in 2009. Uh, this air pollution related laws. So, all these laws were uh, properly uh, incorporated the guidelines or regulations were fulfilled in this EIA report those properly addressed because the land law of the land as well as the requirement of the landing or funding agency is the requirement you can see. Well, uh, in uh, EIA process uh, these were the steps uh, major steps which were properly fulfilled like environmental baseline data collection means what is the stage of air quality, water quality or socio-economic uh, data. Then uh, what are the different project alternatives if we go for uh, alternative projects uh, whether cost effectiveness is there or not. Then recommendations for minimizing and mitigation whatever uh, you know impacts are there to eliminate them, to mitigate them or to minimize them. Uh, some recommendations were made according to the study and then analysis uh, of the extent and distribution of whatever ad adverse impacts or consequences were envisaged 
and then the opinions of the affected people through public participation meetings were also gathered and uh, tabulated and then the environmental monitoring program was also put in proper place. Well, when we compare with no project scenario means because when we talk about alternatives then one is like bow business as usual scenario which, which is the term you might be knowing. So, uh, like there is no project whatever it is let it be like that only. Then project A scenario, project B, project 3 like that ok. Those kind of scenarios can be constructed. So, no project then uh, you know river would not be na navigable by ships because draft is not available, uh, proper uh, construction work has not been done. So, no shipping, no navigation and then the cargo will be uh, you know taken through road or uh, rail freight uh, which is around uh, you know 88 kilometer and that would be the scenario which was estimated that it is very costly and uh, kind of unsustainable in terms of all aspects of the environment. So, uh, uh, we were discussing about comparison with no project scenarios and uh, other issues. So, we listed like advantages of inland water transport uh, over other modes for example, roads or rails. So, in this river corridor basically this is well suited for IWT that is Indian water transport and it has very low cost for transporting goods from uh, you know upstream to the lower stream in that particular stretch of 50 to 80 kilometer. And as we have also seen uh, you know that cost parameter in our case in Indian case uh, like uh, to compare with railway and uh, highway and we found that inland waterways is quite cheap. The similar thing is there and it, it is also like there is no congestion otherwise on roads there are several times congestion, traffic jam those kind of problems, but in this case uh, nothing like that and it is more safe and secure. Uh, this particular table gives us uh, location alternatives for the barrage construction, uh, construction uh, and its technical aspects for example, engineering feasibility or navigation conditions and then investment cost compatibility with the master plan strategy all these green color uh, text gives the advantages that means upstream location is much more advantageous in comparison to the middle or down, downstream. Uh, position and the red sheet gives the negative aspect that means the downstream has certain uh, disadvantages. Similarly, if you see uh, like excavation how much uh, soil or uh, the dredging will be done and then the water quality impact all these things. So, only 1.8 uh, you know this million uh, cubic meter uh, excavation will be there whereas, in middle location around 2.9 downstream or around 2.1. So, again the less impact is there uh, in upstream location. Similarly, like urban or industrial wastewater outfalls in the barrage. So, in this middle and downstream location there are many chances those uh, you know sewer lines or uh, the waste effluents from industrial and urban uh, locations will come whereas, in upstream there is no such chance. So, positive aspect is there. And uh, if we talk about aquatic ecosystem and dredging work, so in downstream there is one advantage that uh, no dredging work is required, but uh, you know in totality if we see the positive aspects are more into upstream you can see these green kind of like uh, how much land will be inundated. So, uh, it is only the 4000 mu that is the unit of the area and uh, uh, this one mu is 6.07 acre and it is more in middle and uh, downstream location. Uh, resettlement will be there, some people will be resettled, but uh, the proper uh, appropriate measures have been taken to resettle them to provide them jobs and other uh, facilities. Then flood and drainage, so no impact on this particular town on the upstream, whereas this is nearer to the Yunji town in, in middle location. So, this is not good location. Similarly, uh, it is adjacent to development downstream of Yunji town. So, uh, the nearer location it is not good, but in upstream it is quite far away from that particular time uh, town. Then the resettlement relatively few adjacent residential areas and uh, in these uh, there are uh, you know some issues which are not uh, that good which is in upstream direction. This is the overview of scoping of the project impact. So, it has given uh, like different kind of 
agencies and different kind of activities step by step which can be seen that uh, all the scopes have been uh, given in this particular uh, chart. And impacts of the project like social development or material resources, ecological resources all these are uh, like these triangular uh, you know solid triangles are short term negative impact and where is this, uh, uh, this cube square long term negative impact. So, you can see short term negative impacts are much more that means after construction of that barrage and that particular navigation track those short term negative impacts will be gone and there will be only the positive impacts. Well, uh, when we talk about hydrology and uh, impact on the hydrology and mitigation measures. So, you can see like uh, there are some flow changes and decreased flow uh, at the downstream change in flow characteristics also and uh, decreases in velocity around the new river uh, those kind of uh, tributaries and uh, uh, those uh, downstream. So, uh, these mitigations can be uh, taken care of by proper uh, you know like filling of the reservoir will ideally be programmed uh, for the wet season. So, that uh, you know floods can be uh, avoided. Uh, so, in summer season you know more water will be released and that way uh, fluctuation of the flow rate can be controlled. So, those kind of mitigation measures have been taken. Then water quality impact are there like because of you know dredging and the construction work uh, some solid waste uh, will be uh, there. So, that would be uh, disposed of properly and there may be some you know accidental spillages of oil or fuel. So, uh, proper measures have been incorporated in that mitigation plan. So, that like uh, two biofilter sewage treatment have been put there, then collection of construction water, ground water pumped from excavations all these things will be taken properly and treated then only discharged. Sedimentation ponds will be there before this water taken downstream otherwise you know lot of soil and uh, turbidity will be there that can be avoided. Ground water level it will there be some you know impact because uh, if there is barrage lot of water is uh, there. So, the ground water level will increase around 0.5 to 2.1 meter depending upon the location and the soil profile. So, for that again to avoid the uh, flooding uh, to mitigate those flooding uh, possibilities some soil will be removed from hill tops and it will be um, place where uh, you know like uh, some areas are uh, of very low elevation. So, those affected areas can be uh, uh, dressed by those soil. Well, uh, fisheries impact uh, may be there. So, again mitigation measures are required because uh, you know fishes has their own way of uh, uh, traveling from one place to another. So, because of these barrage activities their movement will be affected. So, according to that you know some uh, particular uh, uh, measures have been taken like allow movement of migratory fish by coordinating the opening uh, of sluice gates on the barrage during the floods. So, those kind of activities will be uh, done. Then construction of uh, fish pass alongside barrages. There are certain uh, mechanism or construction works which can help fish to travel from one place to another. So, those kind of then fish hatcheries and implementation of long term plan all those things have been taken care of. Air quality related impacts will be there during construction like uh, fugitive emissions, dust emissions or risk suspension. So, all those things will be taken care of by sprinkling water and other things. Then air pollution during operations would be like SO2 or NO2 because of uh, fossil fuels uses like diesel etcetera. So, the air quality monitoring uh, will be done and uh, checks and balances will be uh, taken care of. Mitigation measures for displaced population this is one big issue. So, the compensation plan was properly uh, done as per the study and the you know temporary land loss or uh, you know compensation for permanently loss of the land or their houses and business and employment opportunities all those things have been placed in that particular plan. Public participation uh, by EIA hearing. So, uh, you know on August uh, 4, 2010 this forum was uh, uh, organized for public participation and uh, it was seen that people were having some queries related to uh, you know like uh, 
what will happen to their livelihood etc. So, those were properly answered and uh, it is said that 300 questionnaires were filled by uh, those people and the response was 100 percent and 95 percent residents were happy with this project because uh, they got uh, several benefits from the project. Well, uh, then uh, publicity was also uh, done properly and timely. So, uh, you know in the towns, in the public, all those uh, through internet or through uh, via media, social media or other uh, newspapers etcetera, proper publicity was done so that people are informed timely and they can give their feedback if there is any. Then uh, uh, this uh, public notices were uh, you know in the towns were uh, pasted and people could read like you can see here people are reading what is going to happen. So, those kind of things they have taken care of as per ADB guidelines, Asian Development Bank guideline, guidelines. Field publicity the second round means first round then second round according to the feedback all those updating the information previously posted. So, some feedback got. So, those were addressed and the new guidelines were uh, given to the people and there were some concerns for the redressal of grievance related issues. So, uh, you know uh, uh, proper uh, uh, organizational uh, input were, give, were given and uh, those concerns were properly addressed. And uh, you know this is very interesting thing like uh, this was the old mechanism which used to be followed earlier uh, like this township resettlement officer will be there and then city resettlement officer will be there. It was quite complex. So, people will give feedback to uh, you know here and there and there is no centralized and coordinated efforts, but in new mechanism for this project they implemented this very simple way of getting feedback and addressing the affected people's concerns. So, this public complaint center was there and this dealt with all kind of feedback whether from stakeholders, public contractor, local government, resident engineer. So, this was the uh, you know single window service. This was wonderful thing which people uh, appreciated. Monitoring during construction phase was done uh, for like wastewater quality or river water quality. So, at certain locations these monitoring uh, stations were established including air quality, noise quality and frequency was there as per the guidelines and uh, terrestrial ecosystem like vegetation cover crops if there is any negative impact is there. So, all those observations were made. Then population health like uh, uh, workforce is there. So, uh, you know their quarterly reporting if uh, like for example, if they are inhaling some you know dust etcetera, if they are having some negative impacts, soil water conservation. So, monitoring uh, in the wet season, in the dry season all these things have been taken care of. Monitoring during operation. So, again uh, wastewater arising from domestic seaways, those construction activities, river quality at four locations uh, in the this uh, Tugutang reach that is the town's name. Sediments like heavy metals are there or not in the sediments because of those construction activities, aquatic ecology, the flow, plankton fisheries all those things were monitored. Similarly, terrestrial ecosystem. So, the uh, you know those uh, baseline data uh, were collected earlier and then uh, during operation it was monitored and it was compared properly whether there is any effect uh, in negative terms or not. So, in conclusion we can say that uh, uh, this project uh, was important for interconnectivity uh, through inland water transport in that hilly area where uh, this highways and railway was not feasible and it, it is also like uh, it was beneficial over other modes when compared in terms of cost or time saving and uh, other issues like congestion etcetera. And then the impact uh, it was assessed properly and it was seen that there are lot of advantage even to the local population. And the holistic way of uh, you know public participation was ensured and their grievances were addressed with very simple mechanism of centralized location one single window service and the monitoring of vital environmental elements were carried out during the project uh, duration and later on also. So, all these were ensured by ADB guidelines that was the lending bank, funding bank, Asian development bank. So, according to their guidelines all these things were properly addressed. So, these are the references we have taken information from you can go through if you want to go in detail about this EIA report for uh, submitted with the Asian Development Bank. And thank you for your kind attention. This was the second study 
on inland waterways now next study will be on the roads in the hilly area so first case study of eia we took about uh, high speed railways okay the second we did in inland waterways and third we will do in hilly areas road construction work so that way you will have you know three different kind of case studies of eia and i am sure that it will give you good insight uh, related to eia thank you again for this uh, uh, lecture interaction and attention thank you Thank you.